Make sure to use code BANGLE at sign up on FanDuel for a $20 deposit bonus. And check out my second channel for other games coming up like Red Dead Redemption 2 and Call of Duty Black Ops 4. As well as my third channel with collaborations with some of your favorite YouTubers. Let's get into the video. What's going on guys? Bangle again here coming back at you with another video. Today we're going to be doing the offseason preview of the New York Jets. We've been going in order for these so far. We've already done two of course. The Arizona Cardinals and now uh, the San Francisco 49ers all the way up to the Jets which is what this episode is. So make sure to subscribe if you're not already. Go watch those other videos. There's a playlist on the channel. And let's, without further ado, hop into the Jets offseason preview and plan. And uh, that's going to be going over their record very briefly. And that is, uh, I mean, pretty upsetting. If you're a Jets fan, they went 4-12. and Obviously, this was the rookie year for Sam Darnold. And he is a player that looked better down the stretch. I critiqued him a lot early on. I thought he was a, a player that disappointed a lot. And I think a lot of players or a lot of analysts, fans of the game, thought pretty highly of him. And he was someone that didn't impress me his last year, his junior year at USC. And he's someone that was very bad, quite frankly, at the beginning of the year. But he's someone that improved over the course of the year, which is exactly what you want to see. Uh, and sure, did he beat up on some terrible defenses in the Green Bay Packers? 341, three touchdowns. Yeah, but he's a player that improved, and that's exactly what you want to see. So I think things are looking up for the Jets organization with their potential future franchise quarterback in Sam Darnold. So you got that set. You don't need to take a quarterback here at number three. But what do you do? We're going to start off with who you sign, who you re-sign, and that is going to be Avery Williamson, was your second best player on defense probably this past year. And I say that because it's kind of a toss-up. I think Leonard Williams was very good as well. Henry Anderson was solid. Um, and even Mike Pennell at nose tackle has been an excellent replacement for Damon Harrison. Has gone very under the radar. Um, but, you know, has so many run stops. Has been very, very good for the Jets. I think it's without question that Jamal Adams was their best defender. So I say it's kind of a toss-up for number two. You could even say it's Mike Pennell. He's played a fantastic great in pro football focus. Um, as I lose my voice very briefly there. It didn't crack. That was odd. Um, but played a great grade on PFF, which is not the end-all be-all, but it's pretty good for defensive and offensive linemen in general. Uh, but had so many run stuffs. Was such an impact player on running downs for other teams. You know, and the Jets was just, they were just so fantastic at shutting down the run. However, they lacked in defending the pass. Avery Williamson was so good for them. You absolutely need to re-sign him. They also dealt with some injuries. Morris Claiborne's another guy that was injured a lot that uh, I think is an impact player for them. He was so terrible with the Cowboys. It's not even funny, but has turned his career around in New York with the Jets, which is a little bit surprising for me, but he's been solid. I think he's worthy of a contract extension. Maybe you'll actually give it to a cornerback who deserves it now over a guy like Buster Screen, who we'll talk about just a little bit later because he is not worthy at all of his contract. Jeremiah Tachu is a player that I've loved. I liked him a lot at Georgia Tech. I think he was fantastic. And then he was someone that's been pretty solid for the Chargers before ending up um, being out of a job there and then found the Jets. Played okay this season. Only played about 170 to 200 snaps for them, which is a little bit disappointing, but he played injured and, and was injured and then eventually went to the IR. So you hate to see that, but he's a very good player. I don't think you'll have to spend a lot of money to bring him back. So I think that's kind of a no-brainer for me. Rashard Matthews is someone that I think you should re-sign as well. I think you need more targets and weapons for, for Sam Darnold. And Rashard Matthews probably falls under that category. He's a very solid possession receiver, and it's kind of a wonder the Titans uh, didn't really want him. Henry Anderson, someone that absolutely needs to be re-signed as well. He was a fantastic 3-4 defensive end for them. He's been a really, really underrated player his entire career. I believe he started out with the Colts and was solid for them and then kind of worked his way to the Jets somehow. Uh, but he's been a good player. His entire career has gone so far under the radar. It's a, a little bit concerning almost. He had seven sacks last year for the Jets, but he's really made his money as a run defender. This season, you could say, was kind of a breakout year for him, but he's been so good as a run defender in the past. It's kind of insane that now he's adding pass rush moves and getting after the quarterback fairly consistently in certain packages for the Jets. I think you absolutely need to bring him back. Probably going to be a little bit more expensive due to how well he performed this year, but I think he's going to be worth every penny 
Very, very solid player. And then, of course, Jason Myers was one of the best kickers in the entire NFL this past year. Absolutely somebody you need to resign. And Robbie Anderson, kind of my wild card here. I don't really know how I feel about Robbie Anderson. He's a guy that has a lot of off-the-field concerns, a lot of off-the-field issues. But when he's on the field, he is a surefire difference maker and the biggest weapon the Jets have had. Bottom line, biggest weapon they've had. He's had a decent career. He's only 25 years old. This past season, had 750 yards receiving, six touchdowns. Rookie quarterback, you know, forgivable. 50 catches on 94 targets is not a great catch percentage. Um, and then the year prior, 63 receptions, 941 yards, and seven touchdowns. Yeah, very similar numbers. Um, and the reason I say that is because even though the catches and yards were much better in 2017, the yards per, uh, yards per reception was almost identical with 15 this year. 14.9 the year previous. His catch percentage was 55.3% last year and 53.2% this past season. Uh, and he's kind of been around that his entire career. And targets to receptions is kind of a weird stat sometimes. You rely on the quarterback. But he's been an impact player for the Jets. I think you absolutely need to re-sign him if you can get past his off-the-field issues. With, can you? You're the Jets, probably. You shouldn't re-sign Jermaine Curse. Kind of been a meh player for you coming into the twilight of his career. Don't really want to see him back in New York with the Jets. And I am a New York fan, but I'm a Giants fan. Don't really care for the Jets. But we're going to look at it, as usual, from an unbiased perspective, trying to do what's best for them to get them back to back-to-back -back AFC championships. Um, Buster Screen is someone that I also don't want to see the Jets re-sign. He was so overpaid, did not live up to his contract at all. Um, and as for a slot cornerback, we're going to find a replacement here in a little bit. Bilal Powell. Even though you don't really have a running back right now, Bilal Powell ain't it. Get him out of New York. You've been running him. He's a decent receiving back, but I don't like him. I don't think he should be uh, a player that gets so many carries for the Jets. Kind of been weird. Steve McClendon's a guy that's played well, but he's coming into the twilight of his career now, uh, into his 30s. So I think you need to get better and younger. You guys always hear me preach that. Get better, get younger. So Steve McClendon, who is 33 years old as of seven days ago happy belated birthday steve mcclendon shouldn't be someone that resigns with the jets should not you need to get better you need to get younger i'm gonna stay hard and fast to that truth don't want to see steve mcclendon back in new york and i also don't want to see josh mccown i like what he brings to the table as a backup but let's be honest if you're gonna pay josh mccown a salary bring him on as a quarterback's coach or an assistant coach of some sort don't pay him quarterback money which even as a backup is probably a lot um josh mccown i would say is getting upwards of five million per year and we can actually find out what his exact salary is uh before we move on here but again you're playing someone that shouldn't ever see the field with sam darnold josh mccown is making 10 million per year signed a five million dollar signing bonus so this is someone that you should not bring back base salary was five but of course with the signing uh, and base combined, the cap hit is still the same at 10 mil. Don't resign Josh McCown. He's going to be 40 years old. And it's not like he's Tom Brady, 40, 41 years old. He's Josh McCown. He was coaching high school football. Sign him on as an assistant head coach. Here we go. Mark my words. Within 10 years, you're going to see Josh McCown as an offensive coordinator for an NFL team or a college team, either or. I'm, I would count on it. I would bet on it. I won't because I don't even know where I would file a bet for that. But we're going to move on. Enough hating on Josh McCown. I'm not really. I'm just saying like kind of weird that they're still paying him. In free agency, we're going to start off by signing Denzel Perryman, an inside linebacker who's played and spent his entire career in both San Diego and Los Angeles with the Chargers. Bottom line here, you play a 3-4 style defense. And could that change now that Todd Bowles has been fired? Potentially. Adam Gase has all but been announced as a new head coach for the New York Jets. But you need to get a better inside linebacker next to Avery Williamson, even if you transition to a 4-3, which wouldn't make a whole lot of sense given your personnel. I would say you need to get a better linebacking core in general. Neville Hewitt can't be that guy, and he's who was starting for the Jets this past season. Darren Lee's a guy who could fill that role, but Darren Lee has kind of been a waste of a pick, and he's probably better as an outside linebacker anyway. So I don't really like him on the inside. I think Denzel Perryman is a thumper. 
just what you need in a 3-4 defense on the inside. So I think he fits this uh, scheme pretty well. And I know a lot of people are going to be like, Darren Lee, Darren Lee, Darren Lee. Darren Lee has been a disappointment for the Jets, and I think you guys should realize that by now. So Denzel Perriman, who is a different type of player, by the way. I don't think Darren Lee is an inside linebacker. Get Denzel Perriman, a big thumper at middle linebacker, and have him play next to Avery Williamson, who you re-sign. I think that'd be a pretty good combo. Another player I want to see the Jets sign is your Buster Screen replacement, but this one's better. It's Bryce Callahan, has mainly been a slot cornerback with the Chicago Bears, and he's been someone that has improved every single year of his career. Bryce Callahan has flown completely under the radar, as you see with a lot of these free agents that are going to get paid probably a lot more than you'd guess. Bryce Callahan has been so good for the Bears. He has been a big part of their defensive success this past year. Prince of Mucamara has played well uh, on the outside, as has Kyle Fuller, without question. But Bryce Callahan has been the unsung hero at slot cornerback for the Chicago Bears. He's gotten better every single year of his career, um, and the only concern with him is he's coming off IR. However, in um, via Pro Football Focus, you hear me, hear me refer to that a lot as they are generally pretty good, uh, pretty good at grading NFL players, uh, especially on the defensive side of the ball. I don't think so much at wide receiver, running back, or, or quarterback, but offensive line, defensive line, linebackers, and defensive backs, they're usually pretty good. Bryce Callahan went from being an average player, 64.5 in 2015, his rookie year, 62.9 in 2016, but then he found his home in the slot in 2017, and he was much better, 77.7 which is good for above average, and then an 81.4 grade this past year in 2018 as a slot cornerback, which is nearing elite play. I think when it starts to get real elite, you're looking at a, you know upwards of 85, 90, and there was only seven players in the entire NFL that played a higher grade at cornerback than Bryce Callahan this past year. That was Levi Wallace at Buffalo as a slot cornerback, Desmond King, who played a lot of slot cornerback as well, and Nikel Roby Coleman, who was a slot cornerback. Other than that, Jason McCourty was on the outside. Stephon Gilmore was on the outside. Uh, Chris Harris Jr., he played a lot of slot as well, to be fair. Um, but he's another player that plays on the outside sometimes. Patrick Peterson, obviously a boundary corner. Bryce Callahan, though, very, very underrated player. Very good player. Should be due a lot of money. And I think the Jets would basically give him the buster screen contract and this would be a player that's actually deserving of it next up i'm going to give the new york jets chance warmack an offensive guard for the philadelphia eagles someone that the eagles have absolutely no business re-signing you have stefan wisniewski at left guard who wasn't exceptional this past year but is a solid starter and then brandon brooks who's one of the best right guards in the entire nfl where does chance warmack fit on that offensive line tell me he, he doesn't so, in a weak offensive line class, as one of the best offensive linemen, I think this is a player that the New York Jets absolutely need to target. I don't have them re-signing James Carpenter, but that could be someone that they do re-sign. I'm kind of wishy-washy on him. Um, but if you don't re-sign James Carpenter, and even if you do, you need to upgrade the offensive line as a whole. But Chance Warmack would come in, fit really, really well, probably play left guard for the Jets. Currently, they have Brian Winters when healthy at, uh, at right guard, and I think Spencer Long is the ideal starting center. Not so much at left guard. You need to get a better guard. Brandon Shell comes back at right tackle. You don't really have any issues there, but you need to upgrade one of, at least one of your interior offensive line positions. I think that's going to be offensive guard. I think Chance Wormack would fill that role very well. Now on to the draft. You guys obviously see who I have the Jets taking at number three, Josh Allen. I have him listed at edge here. He would be an outside linebacker for the New York Jets. Would play edge, but has the athleticism, has the versatility to play a back in coverage as well. He did that for Kentucky. He did it all for Kentucky. Is an elite run defender, has great size. He's really grown into his size and has fantastic pass rushing ability. One of my favorite players in the entire draft. I would be disappointed personally to see him go to the New York Jets, but I think this would be a fantastic fit for the Jets and Josh Allen play in just a perfect pure 3-4 scheme and that's essentially what the Jets do um so if you have him coming off the, either the left or the right side with Jeremiah Tatchu on the other or, or Jordan Jenkins Brandon Copeland whoever it happens to be I think Josh Allen would upgrade a very 
very much needed position at, as an edge rusher. He has versatility. He offers you a lot and I think is supreme value at number three. The Jets do not have a second round pick, so we're going to move into the third round. And a player that I'm sure the comment section is going to be like, no way, Bryce Love falls to the third wall. The Jets pick at the top of the third round. You can basically call this a second round pick. It's so high in the, in the, uh, in the third. But I think this, is, this could easily happen in a running back class where there aren't many uh, true heroes, if you will. There's no Saquon Barkley. There are no generational type talents. Bryce Love certainly isn't that. He's someone that's benefit quite a lot from the Stanford scheme, and he's been injury prone at uh, Stanford quite a bit. He's someone that hasn't really been able to stay on the field, and you look at his numbers and the games played won't really tell you that. He's been uh, beat up quite a bit. He missed some time this year, but has really been injured a lot uh, coming into the season, out of the season. He's someone that struggles with durability, so I think that's going to hurt his stock a little bit, and if you disagree, I mean, it's clearly your first uh, time around the block because that is a genuine concern, especially when there are other running backs who have shown no durability uh, durability concerns whatsoever, way more, which really does add to increased durability. And even though Bryce Love is good, he's a solid player. I think him being available at the top of the third round is especially not out of the question when you see what, you know, Darius Geis falling all the way as far as he did. And you could say, oh off the field with Darius Geis. There was a problem with him with a confrontation with the uh, Eagles staff, which apparently never happened. And I would have to assume that even though some media got a hold of that and kind of perpetuated that story, the NFL teams are going to know what actually happened. And they're going to know that the Darius Geis wasn't into anything. So they're not just going to believe some random story, a story that got a little bit of traction in the media. So Darius Geis really fell for essentially no reason. Uh, and there were some guys that got taken at the top of the second round, like Nick Chubb, that were better prospects than Bryce Love is. So for me, Bryce Love being available in the third round isn't anything crazy. But bottom line, the Jets do not have a starting running back. They don't. This is your Bryce, or excuse me, this is your uh, Bilal Powell replacement, and he's better. This is a better player significantly than Bilal Powell. So... You get him starting at running back. Maybe you pick up another one in free agency. I wouldn't be shocked, but I'm, I'm mainly sticking to three for these videos. So Bryce Love in the third round, the New York Jets, pretty good value. Round four, a player that I don't think is getting a lot of love. And the reason is, no pun intended with Bryce Love, uh, the reason is that he is kind of playing third fiddle a lot at Ole Miss with DK Metcalf and AJ Brown. He was absolutely the third best receiver of those three. And those are two receivers that could go in the first round. I think Demarcus Lodge has solid hands, and he has solid NFL potential. He probably will be available at the top of the fourth round for the Jets. Why not get another weapon? Someone that's, again, flying under the radar. Are you noticing a theme? I don't know why that happens to be the one for, uh, for this episode with the Jets here, but I think it is true. He is flying under the radar. He's a good player, has good route running ability fantastic hands. He can go up and get the football. I think he has pretty prototypical size for a wide receiver. Six foot two, 205 pounds with decent speed. This is a solid player. And at the end of the day, when you have as few weapons as the Jets have with, you know, Robbie Anderson, Quincy Anunua obviously coming back, but outside of that, you really don't have too much going on. I'm not a huge fan of Andre Roberts. And I think Deontay Burnett was okay. Um, so it wouldn't be out of the question to try to get yet another target, another weapon to bolster that offense for Sam Darnold. So DeMarcus Lodge here upgrades wide receiver for the Jets, at least in some capacity, especially when you don't know if Robbie Anderson will be coming back. I do have him coming back, but you don't know what the health would be of Quincy Anunua, who is somehow injury prone. And I don't like Andre Roberts. I don't really know what Deontay Burnett offers you so much as what DeMarcus Lodge would offer. So I do like this pick for the Jets here. Obviously why I have it. Round five, I got Kendall Blanton, a tight end out of Missouri. Was absolutely overshadowed by Albert Okwa Ibanam. Absolutely overshadowed. Albert O was so good for the Missouri Tigers that you got to wonder, why are you even having Kendall Blanton get drafted at all? He only had like 20-some catches and two touchdowns or something like that. But in the games that he did play, he has good jump ball ability. He's a red zone threat. 
and he's someone that while he may have been overshadowed that's only because he was maybe playing with the best tight end in the entire country in Albert Okwu Ibanam. So Kendall Blanton, someone that could be available in one of the later rounds, that actually could come in and play a significant amount of time with the Jets. And I know what you might be thinking. Well, Chris Herndon's there. One, you need more than one tight end. Rotational-wise, blocking-wise. But Chris Herndon pled guilty to a DUI, or DWI, very, very recently. Uh, uh, today, as I record this, which made me do it. Um, he crashed into a 76-year-old man's SUV, lost his driver's license now for 90 days, and this happened as I record this on the 9th. Well, it's the 10th now, but this happened on the 9th, just 10 or so hours ago. So, tight end here, absolutely not out of the question. I don't know what the disciplinary action is going to be for Chris Herndon, but even if he's ready to go, tight end, still not out of the question. Uh, I like it as a potential pick for the Jets here. It's a late round pick, for goodness sake. It doesn't matter that much in most cases. And rounding out the draft for the Jets, I have them going Lester Cotton out of Alabama. Someone that looked okay because of what he was surrounded with on the Alabama offensive line. I don't think he's an individually great talent. And you see, how could an Alabama offensive lineman barely get drafted? And it's just because he's not that good. He didn't show... It any, at any moment that he was ever a really above average offensive lineman at Alabama. He proved to be fairly average, and I think he looked better because of what he was surrounded by. This is a player that I, you know, maybe won't even get drafted, but if he can live up to his four-star high school potential, which is just because he was bigger and stronger than everybody else at the time, you know, maybe he's a guy that could do something in the NFL. I obviously don't have him starting. He'd be a rotational uh, guard if somebody got injured or that, that'd really be the only scenario I could see him really getting any any playing time at least immediately he's someone that could improve over time but I don't think he ever really lived up to his hype at Alabama just really a uh, a depth pick here for the Jets as we are going to move on to the offense check out this new depth chart this new look Jets team so I don't have Demarcus Lodge being a starter immediately he's someone that's going to be a rotational guy Probably wide receiver number four in the depth chart immediately. But with Deontay Burnett in the slot, who, again, I think is decent, but nothing exceptional, nothing that would say, hey, definitely don't draft a wide receiver this year. He'd be a fine slot receiver, but Quincy Anunwa coming back. Obviously, we had Robbie Anderson getting re-signed. Chris Herndon, if he plays, is, is solid. Um, and if you guys haven't watched any of the other videos, you got to think, what what is up with this pink and no, no grading for some of these players? Well, if they were injured last year, didn't play much near the end of the season, or are new. I have the pink to highlight them to show what they could add in the 2019 season for this new team. So Chance Warmack, Spencer Long moves from left guard to center, and then Brandon Shell comes back at right tackle. I think it's a decent offensive line, not incredible. Uh, I could see a number of these positions being upgraded. Left tackle, left guard, center, right guard. I think Brandon Shell is fine at right tackle. Uh, and I, I think James Carpenter is not fantastic. I think the, the Jets can do better, and that's what Chance Warmack is attempting to provide. And then, of course, at quarterback, you got Sam Darnold. Uh, now with Bryce Love, another Pac-12 player, joining this team with uh, with Sam Darnold. So it's a decent combo. Uh, you know, Bryce Love is going to offer Sam Darnold a weapon potentially out of the backfield as a receiver. I think Bryce Love needs to develop his hands but his route running ability has proven to be okay mainly he is a runner he's a scat back he's an elusive guy kind of reminds me a bit of a bit of a faster Lamar Miller maybe I don't know I don't really love comparisons all the time because it's hard to find one that just works exactly as you want it to but this is just this is definitely an improved Jets offense for sure let's move on to the defense on the defensive side of the ball there are what appear to be a lot of changes however a lot of these guys are returning, just guys that were injured a lot last year, like Marcus May at free safety, like Tremaine Johnson at CB1, like Morris Claiborne at CB2. The real addition to this team, like Jeremiah Tachu as well at left outside linebacker, but Bryce Callahan is going to be a just an excellent slot cornerback. Everything that Buster Screen wasn't, that's what Bryce Callahan would offer. Josh Allen works perfectly in the 3-4. He was born to play 3-4 outside linebacker in the NFL. 
Um, just a versatile player can drop back into coverage, which will be asked of him in a 3-4 on occasion for sure. But go after the quarterback, Josh Allen. Wreak havoc is something he did a lot for Kentucky, something I think he's going to do a lot at the NFL level. And then Denzel Perryman, just as a thumper next to Avery Williamson at inside linebacker. I think it's a pretty good fit. But that's going to do it for me, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thope. I think, I hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure to subscribe if you're not already. And I will see you guys in the next one. Take it easy.